Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today I'm going to explain how Google is messing up the web again. Look at this guy making videos on YouTube and criticizing Google, what a hypocrite! Guilty, or maybe it's a reflection on Google's full monopoly on most of web services, who knows. So, today we're going to talk about how Google is restricting the capabilities of ad blockers and tracker blockers and how that's obviously a terrible decision for users, for developers and for privacy in general. It's a grand tale about monopoly abuse, browser extensions and a little thing called Manifest V3. And it's also a grand tale about today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games. For example, Focal Board. If you don't know about it, it's an open source alternative to tools like Trello, Asana or Notion. It lets you create milestones, keep track of your nodes, have a bird's eye view of your projects and it basically helps you get stuff done. And you can deploy your focal board server in one click from your Linode dashboard, something I should probably do to ensure that I keep delivering my videos on time. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. Now let's begin with what Manifest V3 is actually is, because I'm sure a lot of you aren't familiar with it, just like I was when I started researching this video a few weeks back. So web browser extensions all work in relatively the same way. They use a file called manifest.json, to tell the browser the name and version of the extension, who created it, what permissions it wants to access, the icons it wants to display in the browser's UI, and the various CSS and JavaScript files it wants to load, and when it wants to load them. It's basically a description of the extension and what it does inside of the browser. As of now, most browser extensions use Manifest v2, the second version of that specification, and this dictates what extensions can or can't do on the browser. And it's necessary to ensure that your browser extensions aren't doing anything weird with your data or with the sites you visit. It's not a guarantee of safety, of course, and that's why there are manual review processes on Google Chrome's extension store, as well as on Mozilla's and Apple's. All modern web browsers conform to this specification, whether it's Firefox, Safari, Google Chrome, and all the other Chromes, I call them Round Chrome, Red Chrome, Orange Chrome, Blue Chrome, you name it. And Manifest V2 is being updated into Manifest V3. Its biggest changes are in using service workers instead of background pages and using a new API to block or modify network requests. Service workers are a good thing, they are part of what devs use to make progressive web apps like handling websites cache, preloading resources, using website offline and more. The new API though is where the problem lies with Manifest v3. Right now with Manifest v2, extensions have access to a feature called Web Request. To summarize it quickly, it lets the extension look at the data going through a web browser, notably the calls it makes to various URLs, and it lets extensions act on these URLs, like blocking them or modifying them. And this API is the backbone of all ad blockers and privacy protection extensions. They use this API to block requests to ad servers to display ads, or to block requests to tracking servers, or to remove the tracking identifiers from the tracking URLs. And while this API is very powerful, it can also lead to some abuse, as some extensions could, instead, decide to reroute traffic to their own tracking servers, or to replace ads by their own, or to steal some data. And that's where Google came in, trying to fix browser extension security. Or at least that's what they're saying. In Manifest v3, pushed heavily by Google, the Web Request API is gone. It's replaced by a new one called Declarative Net Request. And this new API basically prevents any extension from monitoring traffic. Extensions now must declare in advance how they'll handle certain types of requests, or they can't handle them at all. And these extensions also won't be able to load code from outside of the currently displayed website. And on paper, it's a good move. It means that extensions can't abuse the older web request API to monitor your traffic or steal your data. 
Google says that 42% of malicious extensions use the current web request API to do their dirty business and that this API also creates a performance penalty because there are many back and forth. Now first, this performance penalty has been debunked by most ad blocking extensions. It's been quantified as being a few milliseconds at best. So this argument doesn't hold. And second, this new API halves the capabilities of ad blockers and tracker blockers because now they need to declare in advance what they'll want to block, when with web requests, they were able to react in real time to the various calls and answers that the server made. And that's where the problem is. This new API severely limits what browser extensions can do and will make all ad blockers and privacy focused extensions a lot less useful. Ghostory, one of the biggest privacy extensions, said that it harms privacy and that most extensions will be affected with some of them even being unable to work at all. And they're not the only ones complaining that the move is going to be a real problem, including people who don't work at ad blocker or privacy related companies. Now let's pause for a minute. What is Google's business model? Is it providing free services for the betterment of whole humanity? No. Is it making an awesome free web browser? No. Is it to use all this free stuff to track you, create a profile and push ads? Yes, you got it, that's it. And that's the biggest issue here. This spec specifically destroys the capabilities of everything that currently hurts Google's business model. Everything that prevents Google from tracking you or serving you ads will be hamstrung by this new API, at least on Chrome, because other browsers are not taking it without saying anything, fortunately. Firefox will adopt Manifest v3 at the end of the year, but they will also keep supporting the older web request API because they feel it's needed to let users choose which extensions they want to use and what these extensions can do. Safari never supported web request and won't support it at all, but they have their own way of letting ad blockers work. They already support Manifest v3. Other Chromium based browsers will have no choice but to adopt Manifest v3 because they use Chromium, which uses this spec, but they have also implemented ad blocking and tracker blocking features directly in the browser, like Brave, for example. So they don't really need other extensions that do the same job. But if you wanted to use your own favorite blocking extension that you trust more, you'll be out of luck. So there's no issue, really. Only Chrome and Chromium will be affected and every other browser can keep using extensions how they like it with the APIs they want. Well, not exactly. See, Chrome and their Chromium engine control the whole web. Their market share is insane. There's basically nothing else out there. Chromium-based browsers are about 85% of all desktop browsers. Globally, it's about 63% if we count mobile. This means developers barely work on other browsers, with maybe the exception of Apple's Safari for mobile, as the iPhone still has a sizable market share worldwide. This means that extension developers, if they actually want to reach a sizable market, have to develop their extension for Chrome. There's no two ways about it. They need to make it for Chrome. And kind of for Safari, but they already had to do extra work on that front, so that won't change. With Manifest v3, Developers will have to maintain two versions of their extensions, one that runs on Chrome and Chromium-based browsers that is severely limited, and one that runs on Firefox and uses the better, more powerful capabilities of the older web request API. And as we've seen before, developers don't like doing that. Web devs generally don't test their websites on Firefox anymore because its market share is too small, which is why Firefox seems slower and less compatible than Chrome, because people just don't test for Firefox, they test for Chrome, which is the widely used browser. And it will be the exact same for extensions. Why would you do some extra work to maintain your extension for a browser that has very little market share worldwide? Either you adapt to Manifest v3 with the limits it entails, or your extension can't exist at all under Manifest v3 because its features aren't doable anymore, or you spend extra time to make a more powerful version for Firefox, but it's going to be used by a fraction of the market. Or you could also decide to make your extension exclusively for Firefox and drop Chrome. In that case, good job, you've done a good thing for the user. But for your company, not so great. 
And so there are two ways this can go. The first one, the most probable, in my opinion, is that most people won't care. In 2021, only 27% of Americans used an ad blocker. Most people, I think, will just accept that their ad blocker isn't as useful as it once was and will keep on using Chrome because changing is hard or they just don't know about alternatives. A few might turn to Brave or other browsers with native ad and tracker blocking features, but that's still using Chrome. It's just another name for the same engine, and while it will let users benefit from better privacy, it doesn't solve the bigger Chromium monopoly, as I explained in a previous video, that you can check using the card up top. The second option is that people are annoyed that their extensions aren't working as well as they once did, and Firefox and extension developers market the crap out of this, letting people know Firefox is the better experience if you need these privacy-related features. In that case, I could see Firefox grabbing some market share back, at least from users who like their privacy. I personally think that the first option will be the one that happens. People will just get used to have second-rate extensions that do less than they did before, and yeah, they won't change because changing browsers is hard and you don't want to lose your favorites and your account and your syncing stuff and your passwords and people will just not change. And so Google will keep making its ad money and I will keep making my sweet YouTube money. Yeah, I'm really rolling in cash right now. My new Lambo is on the way and I already have five villas on the southeast coast of France. Or maybe I drive a cheap French two-seater and I live in one of the least expensive cities in France in a small apartment. Who knows? This recent change is objectively worse for users. At best, it removes the capabilities of 42% of malicious extensions that should have been blocked by Google's review process in the first place. It still leaves 58% of other malicious extensions able to do what they want. At worst, it won't help at all because people always find a way to circumvent these things. And so Google will have just removed a thorn in its side without any advantage for the user or for browser extension developers. We'll have to see how this goes, but it's yet another move by Google to reaffirm their control over the web. They control the search engine, the browser engine, and the ad network, which means that they decide what goes in the web, what is allowed, and what isn't allowed. And generally, what is allowed is only working in their own business interest unsurprisingly. What is in your interest, though, is grabbing a device that runs Linux out of the box from today's sponsor. Yep, time to talk about Tuxedo again. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, but they ship worldwide, and they ship laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. You can choose from a selection of popular distros, or you can just install your own whenever you receive the device because the hardware has been picked to support Linux. They have a big range of keyboard layouts, including custom ones if you want. They have a ton of configuration options for all their models, which go from the smallest Ultrabooks and Nugs to the biggest high-end desktop towers or gaming laptops or workstations, you name it. They have something for all price points and all needs. And you can customize them a lot with GPU options, CPU options, SSD, RAM, your logo on the lid of the laptop, you decide. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that it runs Linux and that it supports Linux's development, well, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo laptop or desktop. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's a dislike button. But do tell me why in the comments. It's more polite. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover for next month. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!